welcome to the Sunday prep rally. Um, so busy. Okay, we're gonna bang this out. I know you're probably thinking like, ah, I need to do this. Um, and you may not feel so inspired, but just know that we are all here doing it together. I always say it's like the group fitness of the food world because it seems like, you know, a marathon um, before you start, but once you get into it, it's not so bad. We're doing it together and it's gonna take likely under an hour, depending on how much pre-prep you did. So let's bang this thing out, okay? We're gonna do it together and you guys are gonna have the greatest week as a result. All right, this is meal prep week 25, okay? That's crazy, 25 weeks. Um, and so much more good stuff coming at you. We have some Passover menus coming up soon. If you are not um, gonna observe Passover, you will never know that it's for Passover. There's not gonna be any matzah in it or any Passover products. It's just gonna happen to be really light and healthy, beautiful spring-like foods. So get excited for that. Um, lots of good stuff coming your way. But today we are starting with some really, really awesome recipes. These are the recipes that I showcased on KTLA a couple weeks ago. So if you saw that segment, um, you kind of know what to expect. We're doing some rock and fish, which is so great. You can just follow along in your pre-DF week 25. Uh, we have the jerk chicken tacos with Brussels sprouts, loaded sesame noodles with spinach. My kids are obsessed with sesame noodles and they were actually the ones that inspired it. Um, and quinoa spinach cakes with cauliflower. Um, now, as I mentioned on Instagram, I don't know if you guys saw that we are doing a little contest. Oh, actually, by the time you're watching this, um, the contest is over. So never mind. But if you're watching this and it's next week already, you saw that last week um, we did a little contest with Season, which is our sponsor for today. Um, sardines, okay? I know it sounds a little scary. I was terrified. If you saw it in your weekly email um, last Wednesday, you saw that I was absolutely terrified, <laughs> absolutely terrified of sardines. Um, but if you chop them up, you don't see them. You would never know it's a sardine dish as amazing little pop of flavor. This is an option if you want to add it in to your spinach quinoa cakes. It makes it really delicious. Um, but again, there's no need to add it in. It's totally your call. Okay. So that's that. Um, and we're going to just bang this thing out. Who's ready? Are you guys ready? Let's do this. Springtime, beautiful, light, yummy, delicious recipes, and we're going to get through it together. So let's start. I have my oven preheated to 425 degrees, okay? Get your oven preheated. We are going to just follow along in this PDF. If you are not a subscriber, go ahead, get to prepandrally.com, subscribe. You could use promo code free month, all in caps. Try it out for a month for free. We're that confident you're gonna love it and want to stay on because it is absolutely life-changing, as most of you already know. Um, all right, so here we go. We're going to start with the Moroccan fish, and we're going to saute onion, garlic, red peppers, okay? I'm going to move some of these things so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, if you've pre-prepped, super awesome. Uh, if you've already, like, washed your broccoli, everything's all ready to go. Um, I've already washed all of my Brussels sprouts, so those are good to go as well. So that just makes the prep rally much, much easier, okay? Let's do this thing. Um, what am I looking for? My onion. Okay, here we go. So, nice pan over here, you can see. Um, it doesn't have to be a cast iron, I just happen to love the size of the sh and shape of this one, um, but use any that you like, okay? As long as it's just nice and large, bump that heat up and get that oil nice and hot. What time is it? It is, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, beautiful. Bring this out before the kids get home. We got this, plenty of time. It's not gonna take long though. If you did some pre-prep, we really breeze through this. It's all about that pre-prep. I always tell people it takes a little bit of effort, but it just makes the actual process of cooking way more enjoyable. It ends up saving you time in the long run. So anytime you could pre-wash vegetables, pre-cut things, um, pre-peel, keep a garbage by your little station, um, all these little things seem really obvious, um, but they, they really do save a lot of time in the long run. And that's all what we want to do is just like really maximize our time and be super duper efficient. Okay, um, I said to, thin, to thinly slice the onions, but clearly I don't listen to my own directions. But honestly, it doesn't matter. You could thinly slice them, you could dice them. Totally your call. It's all just gonna kind of melt together anyways because you're gonna get nice and soft. In that pan, we're gonna saute the peppers, onion, garlic, 
that's going to be the base of this really yummy, flavorful, kind of like tomatoey based Moroccan fish. And we're sort of making it in a similar manner to a shakshuka, where you make this amazing, flavorful, fragrant kind of sauce. And then um, we sort of like nestle the fish inside that sauce. And it's really good. Okay? You're going to love it. Here we go. Yum. And you could do a similar preparation for chicken as well. Make the same kind of sauce, season it very similarly, and then just, you know, bake your chicken in there. Can't go wrong, right? And any kind of fish works here as well. As you saw, there are a bunch of different options on the grocery list. So use any kind of fish you like. Um, when I was recipe testing, I had bought sole. And sole is delicious. It's also pretty inexpensive. Um, so what I did, because they're like these long, flat pieces, I basically just like roll them up a little jelly roll um so you could definitely do that and i even took some like cilantro put it in the center and rolled it all up so these little like wrap ups with some really yummy flavorful cilantro on the inside so you could do that as well you could get your kids to work and have them do it for you um, or you can use a firmer fish just like cut in two um, single serving portions like sea bass or a cod or halibut is really nice. It tends to be kind of expensive, so it's kind of like a luxury. So do whatever you like, okay? We have four cloves of our garlic here, and again, for all the exact recipes and everything that we are doing here, if you are new, everything can be found. Prepandrally.com. We prep on Sunday, rally through the week together. All right. God, this tripod's been good. I used to have a tripod and it just like wouldn't hold my phone. It would just keep like flopping over. So it's nice to have like a really good quality tripod that works. Pretty sweet. The only thing it doesn't do is just come in for close-ups. That's the only thing you're missing, right? But you can usually see what I'm doing, right? So we just have some minced garlic. Throw that on in there. I'm gonna grab a quick little spatula just to get this mixing around. And then we're going to break apart this pepper. And you guys know how I like to do that, huh? I'll show you my little trick if you have never seen me do this before. But in my opinion, it's the greatest way to cut a pepper. <laughs> okay, here we go. So take your little knife, which hopefully is a chef's knife, and you're just going to cut along these seeds, okay? Until all you're left with is a beautiful pepper. You know what I was remembering today? Remember those stuffed peppers that we made with the seitan a few weeks back? Um, I was just remembering how yummy those were. I had to send out a couple articles, I mean a couple recipes for an article for a feature and they wanted some of my like vegan vegetarian recipes and I was like, oh my God, those peppers, those are my favorite. So I was just remembering about those peppers and kind of missing them. So if you guys love those as much as I did, you can totally just go back to that PDF and make those anytime you want. So don't forget about these amazing recipes that you guys have. Like you don't need a cookbook again because you're constantly just getting amazing recipes week after week after week. There's always at least like eight or so new recipes every single week. So pretty awesome. Really no need for any more cookbooks. I think with cookbooks, I love them. I love how they look. I love reading them over the weekends and I just enjoy an actual book, but you get bored of the same recipes every so often, so you just want something new. This is just like always new stuff coming your way. Pretty cool. All right, peppers are in there. Beautiful. Um, next up, we're gonna get our canned goods ready um, to go. So I have some canned tomatoes. So these are crushed tomatoes. I got fire roasted. That's just what my store had. You don't need fire roasted. You could get any. Um, but I think it just gives like an add a little boost of like smoky flavor. Should be nice. We'll see. It can't hurt, right? So open up that can because once these get nice and soft, which you can also add a little bit of that was salt. You guys can't even see these things. A little salt. Um, that's going to help break this down even faster. You're working on pretty high heat. All right, so you want this to get nice and soft, and then we're going to add in the rest. And this is the only, like, really labor-intensive thing that we're making today. Everything else is pretty quick. Just kind of, like, throw it in the oven, okay? 
So we just want this to get going so it has time to cook and then it has time to cool. All right, another minute or two. Meanwhile, I'm gonna open up this can of tomato paste. That's gonna add richness. I love tomato paste, it's so good. And these are some sliced black olives. If you're not an olive fan, leave them out. I love them, my kids love them. So good, and these are already sliced, which is easy. You could put them in whole if you like. It's fine too. Okay, great. Um, all right, here we go. So that's it, I think it's the rest just goes in. Beautiful, everything else except for the fish is gonna go in now. And you're just gonna let this boil, not boil, you're gonna bring it to a boil, lower it, let it simmer for a little bit, and then you're gonna add the fish in, it's gonna all cook together, okay? Let it cook without the fish for like, let's see, hold on, 10 to 15 minutes. Then we're gonna season the fish, put the fish in for like 20 to 30 minutes. So I'm just following along the PDF, just like you guys are. Yes, I wrote these recipes, but I never memorize them because we're doing new ones every week. <laughs> okay, your can goes right on in there. All right, um, let's see what else. At this point, I'm probably gonna wanna lower. Um, just make sure the amount. Okay, yeah, so the whole can of that, let's see. Um, two tablespoons of your tomato paste. So yes, you already have some tomatoes in there, but tomato paste adds that like thickness and richness and like super concentrated, sweet, yummy flavor. All right, don't skimp on your tomato paste. It's so good. So about two tablespoons of that go in. Cool. Give that a little mix around. Let that start to break down a little bit. Heat on through. All right, you wanna lower your heat because you don't want anything to splatter you or your counter or anything like that because that is just annoying. Okay, next to go in here, um, we're gonna add some spices, paprika, onion powder, cumin, salt and pepper. So I'm just gonna season a little bit with a little more salt. I'm not even doing pepper. I always get lazy when it comes to pepper. I don't know why. And also my pepper grinder, it just like makes the pieces like really big and I feel like it's like spicy for my kids. So make sure you have finely ground pepper if you want your kids to eat it. I even find that I get like a big chunk of pepper sometime and I like start coughing. <laughs> okay, here we go. And onion powder. So you're just like seasoning this up. Super flavorful, super delicious. I have my little can of olives, which again, you could omit. You can use any type of olives that you like. This is already looking so good. I used to make this similar dish for one of my very first clients back in Manhattan forever ago. Um, she kind of wanted this every single Friday night. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We have apple cider vinegar and capers, about a tablespoon or so of capers, but again, follow your PDF, okay? You don't really want that juice. Just pour in the actual capers. Again, you could leave this out if you don't like them. All right, can you guys see what I'm doing? Beautiful, you see the pan? Awesome, because sometimes I do things and I don't realize that you don't see it. So, good, cool. All right, give that a mix around. Bump up the heat a tiny bit, let it come to boil. The vinegar, I know you may think it may seem a little bit weird, but that acid in there is so good. So, so good. It cuts like the sweetness of the tomatoes. This is like very, like, mediterranean -y. Pretty Italian, it's yummy. Okay, oh my fish, I forgot to grab my fish. Okay, go grab your fish from the fridge if you've not gotten it yet. Okay, and I bought a little bit less fish than, you're really supposed to have double the amount, I think two pounds I said, yeah. I just got one pound just because we end up with a lot of food in this house. Um, but you're basically going to let this simmer for like another 10 more minutes just to really develop those flavors. I'm going to grab the lid for this and then we're going to add in our fish, okay? Again, any fish you like. All right, grab a lid, cover it up and that way you don't end up splattering yourself or your counter. Lower it to a simmer and just kind of let it cook for like 15 minutes or so. And then we're going to add that fish in and let it go for another like 20 minutes or so until the fish is cooked through. It depends how thick your fish is, if you have a thinner one, if you have the rolled up ones, and you'll just check it. When it's uh, easily flaked with a fork, 
I always say it's ready. Okay. On to the easier, less labor intensive things. Okay, here we go. Well, that's doing its thing. All right, going down your PDF, I'm using broccoli, as you can see, instead of cauliflower, just because I tested out a menu yesterday with cauliflower, and we're gonna just be cauliflower overload, but again, use whatever you like, modify, um, swap it whenever you like. I'm actually gonna make this in the air fryer um, after I'm done prepping uh, with you guys. So I'm just gonna put this off to the side, but if you are roasting it, 425 degrees in your oven, olive oil, salt, pepper, throw it in there, let it cook for like 25 minutes. Oh, sorry, 45 minutes, okay? It may not even be 45 minutes. That's really for the cauliflower. If you're doing broccoli in the oven, it'll probably take you like maybe 30 minutes. Cauliflower, I feel like will take a little bit longer, um, but just test it, see, okay? Keep opening up your oven and check it out. I'm putting this off to the side. So later on, I'm going to make that in the air fryer. If you do have an air fryer, you could totally do the same. Just drizzle with like a little bit of olive oil, some salt, um, pop it in the air fryer. Otherwise, olive oil, a little bit of salt, oven at 425 for like 45 minutes or so if you're making cauliflower. Okay. Next up, Brussels sprouts. So I've already um, washed mine and halved mine. That's all you want to do. You could do them whole. I just, first of all, I love... I find it easier to clean them when you cut them in half. Um, and you never know what you're gonna find there. I found a worm in them today, kind of gross, I know. But it shows you, like check them, open them up. I always take off the outer layers. If you could get that done um, and buy them pre-cleaned and cut in half, save you a lot of time. So if you're watching this before you actually prep or shop, try to do that because it's recommended and will just save you time and the energy, it's worth it, okay? A little bit of salt. And again, it's gonna go in the same exact oven at 425 degrees, a little bit of oil, and just give it a little toss through. And I like doing this on a baking sheet in a single layer, it gets nice and crispy. So good, Russell sprouts rock. Yummy. And we're just doing these simple. These are gonna go into um, those sesame noodles, and we're also going to be using them inside our taco. So we're just roasting them simply because they're going to get all kinds of other flavors um, added on once we actually build these dinners, okay? So get that in your oven. I always try to do them open face down. Um, it just helps them like steam and cook a little bit faster, but it also helps crisp at the same time. I don't know if that makes sense, but trust me on this one, okay? <laughs> all right, give your hands a rinse off. And come on back. All right, pop this in the oven and then we're gonna move on. All right, I just set my timer. Uh, 30 to 40 minutes is what you're looking for here and then uh, they should be good to go. Okay, next, I'm sorry, I'm like all over the place today. Grabbing my chicken. La, 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 la. All right, totally forgot to grab my chicken before. All right, so we need, I think it's eight, yes. Eight pieces of chicken, okay. Two of these guys, totally forgot to grab all of this. All right. Should have all this prepared in advance. It'll make your prep a lot easier. Your video a lot cleaner, but it's cool. It's kind of what I love about these videos is that they're just real and raw, okay? All right. <laughs> Our fish is still bubbling away. I have this new pot over here. It's like a medium sized pot. We're basically gonna poach chicken and we're gonna do it two different ways. We're gonna poach it all together and then we're gonna shred half of it and cube the rest of it. And we're gonna be using them in two different dinners, the tacos and the sesame noodle, similar to the uh, Brussels sprouts. So, but that way you don't feel like you're eating the same thing all week long. You're switching it up slightly so that it feels different. Okay, so first we're gonna make the actual mixture that the chicken's going to cook in and gonna be super yummy. So here we go, following along the PDF, um, we're going to, you know what, let me start actually with the water, okay? All the measurements, follow your PDF. The water, we're gonna do juice of these limes, okay? I'm going in opposite order, I know. Go in any order you like. But I have two bay leaves here, those add great, great flavor, all right? We're gonna add about a half a cup of apple cider vinegar. Okay, this chicken's so good. 
Also great as an appetizer, if you take this and you shred it and you serve it with like plantain chips. I have a recipe for that online actually. Really similar idea to this. You're just shredding the chicken and serving it as like tapas. Um, so you could do a whole bunch of different things here. All right, you want like a half a cup of soy sauce. So carefully, ooh, pop that top off and get your soy sauce in there. Beautiful. All right, start heating that so we can get it going quickly. Um, and then here we go. Soy sauce, vinegar, half a cup of ketchup. And then we're gonna do ginger, garlic, and the limes, okay? So we have four limes here. We have two cloves of garlic, and then we have some ginger, which is starting to get a little mushy only because I keep this in the freezer. Um, a lot of you guys have seen me do this on Instagram, but you buy so much garlic, you use, I mean, um, ginger, you use such a little bit and so much of it ends up going to waste and it's like kind of expensive and it's such a great product and it's the kind of thing that's just really good to keep on hand in your freezer and it freezes beautifully. So I'm just giving this a rough chop and throwing it in because we're just poaching. Make sure there's no peels on it. Okay. You're just like flavoring this chicken, okay? This is just like making a really, really nice little bath for it to uh, become super flavorful in. All right, so take your ginger, and we're using ginger later on in this meal prep as well for the sesame noodles. So let's just chop it all up now, all in one shot, shall we? We're probably gonna need garlic then too, and in an ideal world, you would look through your entire PDF and figure out where you need garlic and how much, and then just chop it all in one shot. That's really the prep and rally way. But I sometimes forget to do that. All right, so here we go. So some of it I'm just gonna like throw in here whole because again, we're just seasoning it um, and you're not even gonna actually be eating the ginger. It's more just to flavor it up. Meanwhile, the rest of this I'm just chopping up because this is gonna go into our sesame noodle sauce, okay? You could use dry ginger powder if you want, um, but if you're already buying the ginger, why not? And if you can use the real deal, it's so potent, it's so yummy, and it's so good for you. So, so healthy, okay? Um, I already have a little container over here standing by for that sesame noodle sauce, so. I'm just gonna pop it in there, okay? You're good to go. Set that aside again. And you know what? I don't have to wash my hands yet. My hands are just gonna get dirtier. <laughs> so cut your four limes right in half, just like that. This thing is not necessary. Um, and I actually bought it a long time ago just as like a food photography <laughs> prop. I thought it could look really, really pretty. Um, but I happen to use it all the time, like all the time. It really helps you get the juice out of citrus. Otherwise, I find that I'm squeezing and squeezing and nothing comes out. So if you can get one of these, it's like a couple bucks. It really is super helpful, okay? I'm smelling that sauce. I'm about to open that up right when I'm done getting my chicken in here. We're gonna get our fish into the pot, okay? Also, some limes are just juicier than others. Like that one's a super hard one. How are we doing? Is everyone good? Are you relaxed? You're drinking wine. I always say I need music during these meal preps. I just don't want it to be too <laughs> distracting. But normally when I'm in my kitchen, I have music blasting. All right, here we go. Oh, also guys, we're working on a referral program which is pretty exciting. Um, a lot of you have been asking about referral programs because you've told a bunch of your friends about us or you know, you really would love to spread the word even more. So this is another way to incentivize you to do so. We so appreciate every single referral. Um, it's just, it's so helpful and that's the reason why we're here today. So thank you guys. Um, so I will be in touch with details on how to use the refer referral program. I'm still learning, um, but stay tuned for that. Okay, I'm just gonna throw the rest of these out. I had one line that was like pretty hard, um, but it's totally fine. You good. It's not gonna make a difference. Okay, grab a little, a little whisk or a spatula, 
Give it a mix around just to get that ketchup mixed up. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, you know what we did not add? The allspice. The one thing we're missing, again, you can omit it if you don't like allspice. Happens to add some really good flavor and it gives it that classic kind of jerk flavor. One little mix around. Beautiful. You shouldn't really need salt just because it's a, there's a lot of soy sauce in there, but if you're using the low sodium soy sauce, like I recommended, you, um, you may not, you may actually want some of the salt. Okay. So I'm just taking my chicken, throwing it right in. I know a lot of people wash their chicken. I don't do that. I read a lot of articles about it and they all say you're just contaminating your kitchen even more. Um, it cooks off any bacteria. So there's no need to wash your chicken. You're just ending up contaminating your entire sink area and everything around it by splattering just like raw chicken everywhere. So safe to just use and put right into your pot according to what I've read. All right. Give your hands a wash. And okay. How we doing? We all good? All right. Here we go. Let's see what we're up to. I hope my computer gets all wet. All right. Um, beautiful. We're going to bring it to boil and then once it's boiling, we're going to lower it to a simmer. You kind of want to make sure everything is submerged. So I don't know if you guys, yeah, you could kind of see. So make sure all that chicken is submerged in that poaching liquid. And poaching is the greatest technique. I know it's kind of old school, but it's coming back because it's just the smartest way of cooking, especially chicken breasts, which tend to be a little bit dry. Um, it's a great way to cook chicken breast and keep it super moist, but also lock in a lot of really amazing, delicious flavor. So you're not gonna cook this for too long. It goes pretty quickly, 20 minutes or so um, covered once it starts to boil. And yeah, and then we take it out and we let it cool. Half of it you're gonna shred for the tacos and the other half you are going to dice, okay? Everyone good? Moving right along. All right, at this point you would make your quinoa. I have so much quinoa that I tested out yesterday. I can't make any more, but you guys know the drill. We've made quinoa so many times. I trust you on this one, you got it. Um, we're doing two cups of quinoa, three and a half cups of water. That is my trick, you guys know it. Most packages will say two cups of quinoa to four cups of water. So much water and it ends up with mushy quinoa. Follow the two cups to three and a half cups of water, which is my claim to fame. And you will have the best quinoa ever. All right, here we go. Um, spaghetti. We're gonna make spaghetti for the sesame noodles. If you wanted to make fresh spaghetti that night, you could just do that instead. Um, but why not bang it up now if you could? That's how I feel. And then you could also use it for lunches all week long. So I'm just bringing this pot right here. It's like halfway filled with water. Bring it up to a boil and then cook your favorite pasta. I'm just making a whole wheat spaghetti. Use any kind you want. You could use an udon noodle. Um, it's really up to you, whatever you enjoy, okay? Well, that's coming up to a boil. Don't forget you have your Brussels sprouts in the oven um, for like 30 minutes. So I have about 20 minutes left on those. You should have your cauliflower in the oven as well for about 40 minutes or so. And then, and instead I'm doing the broccoli in the air fryer instead of the cauliflower. But do whatever you like and what's good for you. Uh, and then we're going to move on to the spinach. So we're going to make some yummy sauteed spinach. I happen to love spinach. We're making a ton of it, like a, a ton. You want to see how much we're making? I'll show you. You ready? Boop, boop, boop. That's a lot of spinach, okay? <laughs> a ton of spinach. It's two whole pounds of spinach, but this bolts down to like this much. It's crazy, but it is so good for you. It is so, so healthy. We're using half of it as a side dish, which I don't think the kiddos are going to love too much, but at least the grown-ups can enjoy it. Um, and that's with our sesame noodle night. And then the other portion of it is going to be going into those quinoa cakes, which are so good and flavorful, and even kids love those. So if you don't want to use it as a side dish, you can make a little bit less. So it's totally your call. Up to you. Um, before we move on to that, let's go back to our fish really quick. Okay. So over here. Oh, my God, that smells so good. See, so you, you guys see a little bit? It's like getting 
thick and delicious. Oh my God. So you could tell the flavors have blended together. It smells so good. Oh my God, okay. So give it a good mix around. And then all you're gonna do is take your fish and set it right in. I didn't order individual pieces. I told you that you probably should. Um, oh, they brought me salmon. Okay, I guess I didn't have, I ordered cod. I'm just taking one whole big piece of salmon and sticking it in there. You don't have to do individual portions. It's gonna take a little bit longer. Um, we're also going to, I'm using my other clean hand to just season it, season the top with some salt. Even though there's flavor in the sauce, you wanna make sure that every layer has seasoning, otherwise it's not gonna be very flavorful. Lower your heat a little bit, and then just kinda take that sauce. If you have individual pieces, just kinda like spread them around like shakshuka, make little wells and tuck them in. And then, or you could just make a whole piece like what I'm doing. And I'm just covering it over with that sauce, okay? And you want pretty low heat here, and you're just gonna let this cook and do its thing for another like 20 minutes or so. It's gonna be so good. All right, give your hands a rinse off. Okay, how are we doing? I'm gonna move my fish over to the other side because you don't really need to see it right now, and we'll make the spinach over here, okay? So, grab your fish, let it cook on pretty low heat. You wanna make sure it's still bubbling and doing something, so just make sure that it's never just like sitting there. All right, so low heat, let it cook low and slow for like 20 minutes. It's gonna be so, so good. All right, chicken is looking awesome. Make sure it's fully submerged. And halfway through, you could even like flip them just to make sure that everybody is kind of joining the party and cooking through, okay? Let that come to boil, and then you're gonna lower, simmer it, and let it cook for like, what did we say, 20 minutes or so, covered, okay? Um, we have our water heating up for the spaghetti. And I have this big old pan here that we're gonna be using for our spinach, okay? So we need a little bit of water, I mean a little bit of a oil. You could use olive oil, regular, totally your call. And garlic, so this is like garlicky, yummy spinach. You could omit the garlic if you like. I just happen to love it garlicky. So we're gonna mince six cloves of garlic here. Um, <laughs> We're gonna mince six cloves, but because there's so much spinach and there's just no way you have a pan that's that large to do it all in one batch, unless you do and it like major pops to you, that's awesome and I want it. Um, you will likely need to do this in two different batches. My chicken's starting to come to a little bit of a boil, covering it, lowering it down to a little simmer. Let it cook for like 10 minutes, then we'll flip them and it'll continue to cook for an additional 10 minutes or so. And I'll be done. You don't wanna overcook this chicken. Okay, just want to get it like just cooked through. So we need one, two, three, four, five. That's really two and one, so that'll be six. Okay, cool. Throw away those little papers so they don't get into your food. And guys, we are almost done. We're gonna make the spinach. Um, if you are making your quinoa now, which you should be, have that going as well. I know it's like a lot of stuff going on the stove top. Um, so you may need to work in batches if you don't have that many burners. Um, but all we have to do after this is just make our sesame noodle sauce and we're done, okay? And that's it. We put in all the effort now so that later on in the week, we're just eating beautifully. We're sitting with our family and enjoying. And seriously, there's just nothing better than that. And there's so many benefits. I always like to think about all the benefits there are to sitting together with your family. I grew up eating dinner um, around the table with my sisters and my parents always homemade family meals. So it was just something I was used to. I didn't really know what that meant to like go out for pizza on a Thursday night. <laughs> um, so that's just like what I was accustomed to. That was my norm, but it's honestly the greatest thing. First of all, you're sitting down at the table completely calm and relaxed. So first of all, I'll just talk about the health benefits of eating slowly, all right? pacing yourself, you're enjoying the flavors, enjoying the food, you're feeling more satisfied. It's just a healthier way of being. Um, plus, your kids are looking at you and they're seeing you eat beautifully and delicious, healthy food. Normally, you're like sitting there, like hovering over the kid, telling the kid, eat this, eat that, rather than sitting all together at a table. Everyone's just eating, 
peacefully, calmly, nicely. Um, plus, the kids can also get involved in the kitchen to help assemble dinner because all the components are ready, everything is shopped for. There's no stress, so the kids are actually enjoying the process of getting dinner together. There's just so many benefits. I could go on forever, but like family dinner, man, I love it. It's just so nice. It's so, so nice. And yes, Mike comes home a little bit later, but I'll normally eat a little bit with the girls when they get home. And then when Mike comes home, the girls are always hungry again for another dinner. So they'll have like some meat with him or like a side dish or something small, like a little late night snack. So we all kind of sit together and eat then. And it's really nice. And you always have food for your family. It's pretty cool. All right, so I just um, chopped up those cloves of garlic. I'm gonna take half of it, add it to this olive oil. I have not turned the heat on yet. I could do so now, okay? So half of it, reserve the other half for the other portion of the spinach. I'm gonna give my hands a rinse off from all the garlic. All right, that water is still trying to come to a boil. So let that do so. I have an extra, extra large um, burner, like one of those like fast boil burners. So it's gonna start boiling any second now. Um, all right, make sure your chicken is doing something. So if it's just kind of standing there, bump it up a little bit. Beautiful, you wanna see those little bubbles around the rim. This garlic is starting to sizzle a little. I know we have a lot going on right now, but you guys are doing this. You're doing this thing, you're a rock star. Keep your timer on your oven if you have one because that will keep you from forgetting about it. Just keep checking in with all of your things. That is how you accomplish in the kitchen is just getting, getting a lot done at once and working smart multitasking, okay? We're not working on one thing at a time, otherwise we'd be here forever. That is how we do this in like an hour. All right, cool. So here we go. We have these massive things of spinach and these are so good and so healthy. These are also great for like smoothies. So they're just great to buy, all right? So you don't wanna burn that garlic, so make sure you start getting your spinach in there before your garlic starts to burn because burnt garlic is just bitter. So just like heat it through ever so slightly and then get your spinach in there right away and lower your heat a little bit and let the spinach start to wilt and release some of that moisture to keep that spinach from, or to keep the garlic from burning. All right, so look at this. I have a big, big pan here and you're just gonna keep adding to it. So this other portion of the garlic is gonna be for this portion of spinach. Again, we're making a ton here because it wilts down to an itty bitty bit, but it just shows you like how much nutrients, dense nutrients you're getting, okay? All right, let's see. This is the best kitchen tool for greens. If you want, if you have like a lid, some sort of cover, you could put that on at this point. That'll help steam it, help the process move a little faster. Otherwise, you could just wait it out. It's gonna just like wilt down a couple seconds and then you'll be able to sort of flip it over and introduce some more spinach to the mix. Okay, like you see how it's already starting to wilt? You see that? Where it's like deeply green, starting to break down on the underside. So take the parts from underneath, move them to the top. I used to make like wilted greens for my clients all the time. I had the healthiest clients ever. I learned so much about health and nutrition that so many people like actually thought I was a nutritionist because I knew about every diet. I had to keep up with everything. So, but yeah, but I used to always make wilted greens like this. I'd buy like boxes and boxes of spinach or chard or kale and just saute it all. So good. Kind of thing where like if you don't make it, you're not gonna eat it, but if it's there sitting in your fridge, it's such a great side dish and it's really good to put into those burgers. So you're making all the components and then on Thursday, you're actually gonna be assembling those burgers. They're so good. You're gonna reserve some of that quinoa. So make sure you don't use up that quinoa. And I write in the instructions how much you're gonna be saving of the quinoa so that you don't use it all up as your side dish for your fish. Okay, so make sure you reserve that amount. I'll tell you how much it is, hold on. Um, two cups, okay? So after you make your quinoa, let it cool and then set aside two cups of it and reserve that for those burgers at the end of the week. Make sure nobody touches that quinoa, okay? My water's boiling, I'm gonna add the pasta in a minute. Uh, your chicken, 
if it's boiling, you just kind of want to make sure it's fully submerged. So give them a little flip if you need, or just kind of press them down. Okay. There we go. Just flip them over. Oh, it smells so good. Let it keep cooking for an additional, like, five to ten minutes. I'm starting to smell the Brussels sprouts as well. So we're going to go check on those. It still says eight minutes on the clock, but then you always want to check and test. Every oven is different, so it's always hard to say, like, oven times because you just never know. Everyone's oven is so completely different. Okay? So you see this is totally wilting and breaking down. You just want to keep rotating it, keep turning it so that all the new leaves go to the bottom. And at this point, you can season with a little bit of salt. You could do some pepper if you like. You could do some onion powder, garlic powder, up to you. Pasta, just gonna throw in there. You see that? Boop. See? You could break them in half if you like. I didn't, but you could. I'm gonna use these same little tongs and just kind of let the pasta soften soften and then make sure it's fully submerged in that water. All right, and then we're just going to let this cook, strain it, store it. You could use it all week long and then we're going to be using it in that sesame noodle dish. They're so good. You're going to love it. Your kids are going to love it. All right, look at this. The finish is almost done. A couple more seconds. Keep moving it around. Okay. And you're going to see as the spinach, once you take it off of the heat and as the spinach cools, it's going to start releasing a lot of water. Um, so what you can do either today or before you serve it is just either press it in a colander if you really want to release all of the moisture or just spill off some of that liquid uh, when you store it. Okay. Here we go. So I have a little storage container over here. And all you're going to do is take your spinach, like look at that, that whole large container. Like you see all this liquid that comes out of it? And that's going to pool at the bottom. So try to squeeze it as much now and then either before you serve it or if you wanted to do it now, squeeze out the rest of it. My dad is so unique. He usually drinks this liquid. I mean, it is super healthy. It's literally just like water from the spinach. Super nutrient dense. So you could drink it if you like. I think it's weird, but you can. Okay, so that's half of it. So you see like that whole entire thing just turned into this tiny little container, um, but it's cool. We're gonna keep going with this other batch and then we're gonna make the sesame noodle sauce, okay? So same exact thing, I know it's kind of annoying doing two batches, but it's worth it because you want enough for those burgers and for your side dish, okay? So oil is in, pan's already hot. Get your garlic in there. Boop. Look at me, I'm avoiding a trip to the sink because <laughs> garlic is sticky. But look at that. We don't need the sink now. All right, so mix this around for one second. Let it heat up. Heat is on. Pasta is boiling. We have our chicken that's cooking. We have our fish. Take a look at that and make sure it's doing nicely. Smelling. So stinking good in there. Uh, Brussels sprouts before I get that in. Let your garlic cook for one second. Brussels looking so good. I'm gonna let it go in another couple minutes. They're definitely cooked at this point. I just like when they get a little bit crispy. So I'm letting it go in another five minutes. Okay, but again, do you. Bumping up that heat and start letting that first portion of the spinach kind of break down. Okay, and look how good this looks. You have those little speckles of the garlic. So delicious, okay. We are going to move that off to the side. Um, we're gonna start getting ready to make our sesame noodle sauce. So we already have that ginger in here, right? And we're just gonna add everything else to that container for the sesame noodle sauce and then we're done. Shutting off my chicken, okay? I'm gonna let it sit in there for another couple minutes and then I'm gonna remove it to a storage container and we'll be done, okay? Spinach is working. Oops, I had shut this off. Whoops. Okay. Spinach is starting to break down. Let that continue to do its thing. The spaghetti is starting to cook. 
Beautiful. All right. Once the spinach breaks down, you're going to keep adding to that. Meanwhile, we have our container, storage container here with the garlic. If you guys need a break, pause it and come right back to us. Don't worry if you need to do that, okay? So we have our ginger already. We're going to add our soy sauce. So just follow along your PDF. You want your maple syrup, your toasted sesame oil. The sauce is so good. And with the sesame noodles, the longer they sit with the noodles and let the noodles absorb all the flavor from the sauce, the better, okay? And you want a nice amount of sesame oil because they're sesame noodles. And that is what gives it that classic flavor. Do we use this up, okay. Perfect. Mix around that spinach, make sure it's all getting nice and soft. Here we go. I'm gonna add in a little bit more at this point. Meanwhile, we have our sauce here. So far we've added the ginger and the soy sauce. Okay, next up, um, minced garlic. You know what, instead of minced garlic, guess what I'm gonna do? because I've already minced a lot of garlic today. Not in the mood to do any more. You could do garlic powder or onion powder. Totally your call. I almost prefer that here because you don't get big pieces of garlic, especially for the kids. But if you like real garlic, just mince it really fine. Put it in there, totally up to you. But just know you can always use some garlic powder instead, or onion powder. All right, keep mixing this around. Are we good? You guys are multitasking heroes. Look at you. If you're not used to multitasking, it's such a great skill to learn in the kitchen, being able to manage a ton of different things going on at once. As a private chef, I always tell people, like, I could never have done my job if I focus on one thing at a time. You always have to have a bunch of different things going. Thankfully, I don't think I've ever really fully screwed up. Um, I remember, like, one time I was cooking for a client. I was making burgers in the oven, and a fire <laughs> happened in my stove because I was broiling them and then I poured off the fat, like or the like drippings, I guess, um, in the sink. So it got like at the top of the pan, it kind of like touched the top of the pan. And then I put it back in the broiler and because the top of the pan was close to the top of the broiler, it caught on fire. Scariest thing ever. I had to go out, buy brand new meat for my client. I had to obviously eat the cost of it. Thankfully it was just burger meat, so it wasn't the biggest deal. But it took more time and then I had to like package everything up and still like get from Westchester to the city to deliver to them. So it was just super stressful. But thankfully, other than that, I don't think I've ever like really screwed up. I wish I could remember another time where something really bad happened. But thankfully, things have been pretty okay. Um, but yeah, try to multitask because you'll save a ton, a ton of time. Okay? That's how you get things done. All right, before we continue with that sauce, let's just take a second to go through everything here. And then we're done, we're so close. We just need to make the sauce, you guys. We're so, so close. We're like at the finish line, I promise. All right, let's just keep cooking for like one more minute. I'm gonna shut off the heat because it's basically done. And here we go, okay. That'll continue to break down a tiny bit more as it sits in this container. Oh my God, it looks so good. All those little crispy bits of the garlic at the bottom. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Your kitchen should be smelling garlicky and delicious. Yum, okay. So make sure you set aside um, some of your spinach also for your burger night. You could even mix the where you reserved your quinoa, you could throw your spinach into that same container because it's all gonna go together for your spinach cakes anyways. Um, so set aside, hold on, how much, how much, how much? One and a half cups, okay? So take one and a half cups of this, put it in that container with that quinoa and set it aside um, for your burger night, okay? Your spinach burgers. All right, I'm taking out my Brussels sprouts. I'm gonna show you what they look like. One second. All right, check it. Checky, checky, checky. Woo, okay. Looking so good. Boom. You guys know I love those extra large sheet pans. So good. Okay, real quick, I wanna take the chicken out of this poaching liquid. So 
So we do that in one second. Look at your fish, see how that's doing. You want to feel the fish, see if it's firm. It has a little bit of give to it, so I'm going to cook a little bit longer. Once it's firm to your touch, um, you don't have to touch it with your finger, but once it feels firm when you press it with like a fork or something, then you know that it is uh, cooked through. Okay, take a little piece of pasta or spaghetti, and I might call it pasta. Okay, hot. Try it. Al dente. Okay, I need a couple more minutes. But I have a colander standing by, ready to go for when that is ready. Meanwhile, we have another storage container. And what you're gonna do, I'm gonna rinse off these little tongs so I don't get spinach on my chicken. But I'm just using these same tongs right here. And you're gonna pull your chicken out of this poaching liquid. Keep the liquid because it's really good to store with the chicken to keep it nice and moist. Okay, you're gonna take this out. Once it's cool enough to handle, take half of the chicken and dice it into small cubes. That's gonna go in our sesame noodles. And take the other half and shred it with two forks. You don't have to do that tonight. You could store it all like this and then just leave it. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do actually. I'm just gonna pour this over. It does cool a lot faster if you leave the sauce and the protein separate and then let it cool and then store it all together. So whenever you're making like a brisket and it's like a ton of sauce, take the brisket out of the sauce, let them each cool individually and then put it together. It'll happen a lot faster, the cooling process, okay? But I'm not really in a rush because it's not nighttime here. So I'm just gonna let it sit in this poaching liquid and set it off to the side. Okay, beautiful, that is that. Spaghetti should be ready in a couple minutes. We have our Brussels sprouts ready. The broccoli I'm gonna put into the air fryer, um, but that's your cauliflower, the broccoli. That should either be still cooking, um, so keep an eye on that. Um, your quinoa should be just about done now. Your spinach is done and right here, looking so good. Your fish is almost ready, so let's just do this while that, fin that pasta is finishing up cooking. Let's finish up our sauce, okay? We have uh, soy sauce, sesame oil, um, ginger we already have in here, the garlic, so either you can do the fresh cloves of garlic that you've minced or the garlic or onion powder, a little bit of maple syrup, which is I feel like really why the kids love it, that's a little bit sweet, um, rice wine vinegar, I'm going to use some apple cider because I already have it out and it's just as good, okay, Do -do. And then salt and pepper to season. You may not need so much because of the uh, soy sauce, but when you actually make the sesame noodles, you may want to season it a little bit if your uh, spaghetti isn't exactly seasoned, okay? You may need a little bit of extra salt. And then we have two scallions here that I like to um, add to the dressing. You could just add scallions at the end when you're assembling it. Or you could even do both, add it now and at the end. But I like putting in the dressing because it slowly releases that oniony flavor and it perfumes the whole sauce and makes it really flavorful. Okay, so take all that. Can you see? Yes, you can. Good job. Awesome. Throw that in there. That's the whole thing, okay? That's your sesame noodle sauce. You don't even need to mix it now. It's fine. Cover it up, throw it in your fridge, and leave it there until you're going to serve it. Our spaghetti should be just about done now. So I'm going to take my colander. Pop it in your sink, shut that heat off, and strain that pasta, okay? If you are on like a low carb kind of diet, you can totally do these sesame noodles with like a spaghetti, no uh, spaghetti squash, or you could do a zucchini noodle or a shirataki noodle. It's completely up to you, whatever you like, okay? So give that a little rinse off, let it cool. Mm, the smell of pasta is just like the cutest. I love it. All right. And a great way to ensure pasta doesn't stick to itself um, while you store it in the fridge is first of all to wash it off really well when you're straining it, um, to wash off any of that starch, dry it off really well, and then um, just kind of like shake it out really well is what I mean. And then you could even coat it with like a tiny bit of oil and that helps keep it from sticking to itself. Okay, so that's it. I'm shutting off this fish. I will show you what it looks like. It should be perfection now. Oh my God, that looks so good. So 
so, so good. I will show you what that looks like. And that is all, my friends. We have done a full-on prep. I know this is a little more chaotic than usual, but like, can you see that? Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> that smells so good. Yum, okay? So you could use any fish in that recipe. You could even do chicken in that recipe if you like. It's a great base sauce for like everything, essentially. Um, lots of like Sicilian kind of flavors. You could even finish it with some fresh lemon juice, fresh lime juice. So delicious. So I really hope you guys love all this amazing food. Let me know how you go about your week, how everything turns out. Share your pictures. Be sure to tag us at Prep and Rally. Uh, 55 minutes today, a little bit longer from meal prep just because we had a lot of different things going on uh, and some things are more involved, like the fish. Um, so worthwhile, you guys. Okay, have an amazing week. I love you guys. We did this under an hour. You guys are going to have the best week ever. Love you. That is Meal Prep 25. Do it.